and welcome to the 2019 draft affordable housing webinar. My name is Patty Kruna and I'll be helping facilitate today's session. So in a moment, I'm gonna pass the microphone over to our presenters to provide an overview of the plan and then we'll move into the Q&A session. We are recording today, so the recording, the draft plan itself and the Q&A will all be posted on the Minnesota Housing website for later reference. Um, we do appreciate you being here today, and just for the record, we have approximately 300 people registered for today's webinar, so this is, a, I think, a really good testament to how much interest our AHP really does in the community, so this is good, and we thank you for attending. So I'll now turn the mic over to our presenters, John Patterson, our Director of Planning and Research, and our Commissioner, Mary Tingersall. Good morning, everyone. This is Mary Tingersall, Commissioner at Minnesota Housing. And for those of you who have joined us in the past, thank you again for joining us for our annual review of our proposed affordable housing plan for the next program year. Uh, some of you are new to the uh, affordable housing plan. It is really our uh, business plan for uh, activities that uh, Minnesota Housing will be engaged in uh, for the next program year. For a variety of reasons, we choose to run our program year from October 1st to September 30th of each year. So once this affordable housing plan is approved, it will go into effect for October 1st. Uh, John uh, Patterson will go over the dates for uh, submitting your comments and uh, also the dates uh, that we'll be moving forward with this for our board of directors. Minnesota Housing has a variety of uh, financial resources that we're entrusted with administering, both by the state and the federal government, as well as uh, private sector resources, uh, such as tax-exempt bonds. So uh, this plan addresses all of those resources, and you'll see that in more detail as we go through. Sorry, we're uh, having trouble advancing the slides, so there we go. Uh, so uh, leading our thinking about how funds are allocated, uh, we look to our strategic plan. Uh, the Minnesota Housing Strategic Plan was adopted in 2016, and uh, this coming program year will be the last year of our current strategic plan, which has been called Housing is the Foundation for Success. One of the things that uh, has happened this year that's a little unusual is we just completed the work of the Governor's Housing Task Force. And uh, we're very delighted that we as an agency will be able to look to the recommendations of the Governor's Housing Task Force in developing the next chapter of the strategic plan for Minnesota Housing. And that process will begin uh, sometime next year to be in place uh, prior to the proposal of the affordable housing plan for 2020. In our current strategic plan, our vision is that all Minnesotans live in a safe, stable home they can afford in a community of their choice. And our mission is that because housing is the foundation for success, we collaborate with individuals, communities, and partners to create, preserve, and finance affordable housing. And that's why we're so delighted that there are so many of you that have joined us for the webinar today. We really do want to hear from you uh, in comments on our uh, affordable housing plan, and we really hope that you will take the time uh, to submit any uh, comments that you do have. I'm going to take a page out of the uh, Governor's Housing Task Force, which really makes the point that um, having enough housing in Minnesota, and especially enough affordable housing, is really one of the things that we need to do as a state uh, to ensure that our, uh, our economy remains uh, sound and stable. The reason for that is that if um, there's a shortage of housing, that's affordable to the workforce in Minnesota. 
employers won't be able to attract the people that they need to do the jobs that keep our economy humming. And uh, some of the kinds of uh, folks that uh, will be affected if we don't have enough affordable housing are newly hired workers being able to find a place to live. Daycare providers who live, will live near work and reduce their commute time, making it easier to care for our children. Children experiencing housing stability and frequent moves will find stability and regularly attend school, making classroom instruction more consistent for all students. Family and friends struggling with chemical dependency or mental illness will have a stable place to call home, allowing them to focus on their treatment. Young families will find homes to buy, allowing them to achieve the benefits of home ownership, and seniors will be able to make home modifications and arrange for in-home services, allowing them to age in place and stay near family. So these are just some of the uh, households that we uh, hope will be served with our affordable housing plan. Before I turn it over to John to go over the details of the plan, I just wanted to review two key sets of statistics that um, uh, we work with in recognizing that there is a lot of need for affordable housing in Minnesota. Uh, in uh, the years from 2000 to 2016, the number of cost burdened households, that's households spending more than 30% of their income on housing, has increased from 350,000 households to 550,000 households. 46% of renter households are spending more than 30% of income and 19% uh, of homeowners. So that means that more than one out of four households in Minnesota is spending more than 30% of their income for housing. So clearly there's uh, room for the work that we do. One other thing that uh, we've really been experiencing is uh, that over that same time period, and this is why there are more cost burdened households, is that the amount of income uh, that people are making on average for renters uh, got to um, uh, an inflation adjusted number of just over 31,000 in uh, 2010 at the end of the Great Recession and has now recovered somewhat up to 36,700, but in inflation adjusted dollars, it's still not back to where it was in 2000. So incomes from 2000 are actually down, where on uh, a real-time basis, rents are up by almost $100 a month. So that's not an equation uh, that says that the marketplace is going to uh, solve this issue alone anytime soon. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to John uh, to walk through our plan for the coming year. Thank you, Mary. This is John Patterson, and I'm the Director of Planning, Research, and Evaluation here at Minnesota Housing. And I'm really going to go over now our approach. Now, Mary laid out very nicely the issues we're confronting, but I want to talk about how we're going to address those issues. So the following section, we will outline our approach to creating housing stability and a more prosperous Minnesota. Um, this slide shows uh, uh, under our current strategic plan, our core areas of work on the left and our strategic priorities on the right. So the left sort of covers all the areas and activities that we have and the, the left side does and the right covers those areas we decided to put special focus and attention on to. Um, as you'll notice, there's some overlap between them. Um, as you'll see that some of the priorities are really subsets of the core activities. For example, we want to, under the core activities, promote successful home ownership. But within that, we really want to focus in on reducing Minnesota's racial and ethnic home ownership disparity, where houses of color are far less likely to be homeowners. Some of the um, strategic priorities are overarching. If you look at the second to last one, we say finance housing responsive to Minnesota's changing demographics. That covers all of our core activities. So what I'm going to do in this presentation is quickly go through all 11 of these items, the six activities and the five priorities. And I really want to highlight what we've done so far to this, under this strategic plan, um, the four years, and we've had some um, significant successes. We we'll also talk about what we're specifically going to do in 2019. So our first core activity is promote and support successful home ownership. 
And as the slide shows, um, we've increased the number of lenders or number of homeowners that we've lent to from about 2,200 in 2011 up to 4,300 in 2019, nearly doubling. And this activity involves things such as home mortgages, down payment and closing cost loans, and home buyer education and counseling. And really what we wanna do in 2019 is really maintain this record levels of home mortgage lending through continuous improvement in our program design, business development, and operations. Um, you know, within that prior or that activity, we have the priority, as I said earlier, of reducing Minnesota's racial and ethnic homeownership disparity. And we've had great success here. Um, in 2011, we uh, uh, had two, 549 houses of color that were um, borrowing from our, our programs. Now we're up to um, almost 1,300. That's more than doubling. And we've done this through a lot of activities. Um, including down payment assistance and um, home buyer education. And one of the great successes we've had as an agency is we've maintained um, or gotten to reach 35% of our first time home buyers going to households of color. Um, and it's, it's a lot of success. And one of the issues is that we only account for about 5% of the mortgage market in our programs. And we need a much broader um, alliance and uh, set of organizations to work with. So we've taken a leadership role with the Home Ownership Center of leading the Home Ownership Opportunity Alliance, which is a broad-based uh, coalition trying to reduce the disparity to reach a, a market-wide uh, perspective. So again, for 2019, we want to maintain that 35% of our first-time homebuyer mortgages going to households of color. We want to continue our Home Ownership Capacity Program as a permanent program. That's a relatively new program that we converted from a pilot to a program. Um, really two to three years of intensive financial coaching and counseling for people who are not quite ready to become homeowners, but could be. And um, we've achieved about 87% of those households being of color. And a great statistic is that um, of those who've completed the program, um, and those of which we have um, outcome data, 60% have become homeowners. So that's been a very successful program. And again, we want to continue our down payment and closing cost loans and continue to lead the homeownership opportunity alliance. Um, our second core activity is financing um, new affordable rental housing opportunities. And again, this is through um, amortizing loans, um, housing tax credits, and zero interest deferred loans that we give to developers to build and rehabilitate um, housing. This area is focusing really on the new construction side. Um, and we've had, again, significant increases. In 2011, we hitted a little over 700 um, um, housing units newly constructed. And now we're up to over 1,300, um, which is a, a significant increase. For 2019, we're making um, over $200 million available for overall housing um, rental development. Most of that money will go to new construction. Um, some highlights are that we've uh, awarded or set aside up to um, $60 million of housing infrastructure bonds. A majority of this will go to new construction um, for um, supportive housing. And the legislature this year um, with the housing infrastructure bond bill uh, made a priority around behavioral health needs in those supportive housing units. Um, we'll also be uh, allocating a little over $12 million of 9% low income housing tax credits. And when those, uh, those uh, credits are sold to uh, investors that will raise about $100 million, over $100 million of equity for rental housing in Minnesota. And finally, we'll award about two million dollars under the workforce housing development program to build um, primarily more um, market rate um, housing for workforce uh, workforce in each community and in communities across Minnesota. Um, another core activity is preserving the existing housing stock that we already have. Uh, it's far more co uh, cost effective to preserve what we have than to build new and this graph just shows um, uh, how many units we've done under this strategic plan we plan to do in 2019. We've done about 12,000 uh, units of rental housing and um, almost 5,200 units of owner-occupied housing. And we wanna do this year um, is we have recently made some changes to our home improvement programs and our rehabilitation loan program for owner-occupied owner housing. And uh, with those improvements, we hope to expand uh, our lending, um, both in the number of loans and the geographic reach that we have. We've made those programs easier to use for administrators and particularly with the home improvement loans, we have made it more beneficial to borrowers. On the rental side, um, we're planning to redesign our rental rehabilitation deferred loan program. This serves uh, smaller properties in greater Minnesota, 
And the goal is really to make this um, program easier to use for sort of the mom and pop landlords, um, people who are not professional property managers, people who bought properties maybe for an investment, and making it easier for those um, property owners to access the program. Finally, we'll allocate another round of funding for our publicly owned public housing program, a great resource of general bond obligation, um, general bond, uh, general obligation bonds for uh, public housing rehabilitation. Um, within the sort of the preservation activity, we do have a priority around preserving housing with federal project-based rent assistance. Minnesota right now has about 37,000 units of project-based rental assistance. And, um, you know, because of maturing mortgages, I mean, maturing mortgages and expiring contracts with uh, HUD under Section 8 and property de deterioration, some of these units are at risk of being lost. Fortunately, uh, over the strategic plan, we've only lost about 1% of those uh, 37,000 units, only 30 units of the Section 8, and about 350 of the rural development USDA properties. For this upcoming year, we really want to fully maximize our, two of our big preservation programs, um, PERIF, which is the Preservation Affordable Rental Investment Fund, and Housing Infrastructure Bonds. You'll see housing infrastructure bonds again listed. Uh, two of the primary uses are new construction for supportive housing, which we've already talked about, but another key use is also preservation of federally assisted units. Um, we also want to retain our Section 8 performance-based contract. You may or may not know that we actually administer for the project based program of Section 8, we administer those contracts for HUD. Um, and by doing so, we make sure the properties are well run, there's timely payments um, to the landlords for the rent assistance, and to resolve tenant um, landlord issues as quickly as possible. And if we do that well, these landlords are much more likely to renew their contracts. So we have an interest in making sure that those contracts are well, well administered. Um, our next uh, core activity is lead, collaborate, and take action on critical housing issues. And at Minnesota Housing, we not only want to be a funder of housing, we want to be a leader. Um, and we've done that in several ways under the strategic plan. Um, Commissioner Tinkerthal is either the chair or co-chair of both the Interagency Council on Homelessness and the Olmstead Subcabinet. And those two initiatives are um, actually housed within Minnesota Housing. The Interagency Council really focused on preventing and ending homelessness, 11 state agencies working together to do that. The Olmstead Subcabinet is eight agencies um, working together to provide people with disabilities the choice and opportunity to live, learn, work, and enjoy life in, in integrated settings in the community. And then finally, we have been one of the lead sponsors of the Governor's Housing Task Force, which Mary already mentioned, and they've just recently come out with recommendations to secure Minnesota's housing future. Our goals or our priorities for 2019 is to continue implementing the plan to prevent and end homelessness and the Olmstead plan, and also identify recommendations from the governor's um, task force on housing that can be incorporated into our work. Um, I think I already talked a little bit about the interagency council, but preventing and ending homelessness is one of our strategic priorities. We've done that through a suite of programs. We have some homeless prevention dollars, we provide rent assistance for people who are homeless or at risk of becoming homeless, and we also finance supportive housing. Um, we also, again, as I mentioned, work very closely with the Interagency Council on Homelessness, um, playing a leadership role. Um, since the first Interagency um, Council plan to prevent and, and homelessness was implemented in 2014, homelessness in Minnesota has dropped by 8%, which is a, um, a, a good success story, but we obviously need to do a lot, lot more. Um, at Minnesota Housing, um, this year, we're really going to continue to pursue our goal of creating 5,000 new housing opportunities um, for people who are homeless or at risk um, by 2020. And we're also going to be implementing the Homework Starts With Home um, pilot program. This is a program that we, in partnership with Minnesota Department of Education and Human Services, uh, to provide rent assistance and other supports to homeless students and their families with the twin goals of stabilizing housing and improving educational outcomes. Um, our fifth uh, core activity is provide housing resources to support community and community and economic development. Um, uh, for, to provide these resources, we maintain a suite of, of programs um, to serve the full continuum of housing needs. This graph shows the income of distribution of the households that we assisted in 2017. Uh, the renters are in blue, largely lower income, um, you know, 
$20,000 or less, and homeowners say, across the full spectrum from maybe $30,000 you know, up to eighty or hundred thousand dollars. That shows the broad distribution of households that we're assisting. Um, we will continue uh, this year to engage, listen, and support communities as they uh, address their their housing needs, and we'll continue to provide um, capacity building grants to communities. These are forty thousand dollar one time grants to build local capacity to address housing needs. And through the suite of programs. Um, collaborating with local communities and providing technical assistance, uh, we can focus on supporting community development uh, and communities across Minnesota. Um, the next uh, priority is, is really a subset of the previous uh, activity, is addressing critical housing needs in communities across Minnesota. We do this provide, by providing community level housing data um, on our website so that communities can assess their needs. We host housing dialogues in communities across Minnesota. Um, here we talk about uh, local issues and brainstorm solutions with local partners. Typically, we do about uh, three to five of these a year, and typically, you know, a five, 50 to 100 people show up at each event. We also provide a full range of financing tools, as we just discussed, and we provide technical assistance to people who want to apply for funds, uh, for communities who want to apply for funds um, to address their housing needs. Um, this upcoming year, we will again have these housing dialogues. Um, a focus will be on discussing ways to meet local needs, and as Mary mentioned, we'll receive input for developing our 2020 to 2023 strategic plan. Um, our next priority, which again is overarching, is uh, financing housing that res that's responsive to Minnesota's changing demographics. Two key trends outlined in the report, um, one is shown here, but the first one is Minnesota is becoming much more diverse by uh, 2035, house of the, colors, the, house, the population of the color will increase by 50%, while white households will only increase by 4%. So Minnesota has become much more diverse. The other key trend uh, shown here is that by 2036, there'll be another 485,000 seniors in Minnesota above the 840,000 that are here right now. And you can see that there's just, that's sort of illustrative of the, the uh, people may refer to as a silver tsunami, but the big wave of seniors coming, this, coming um, are aging in place in Minnesota. Um, for our commitment for the upcoming year is to use um, some of those HIV resources we've also talked about previously to develop senior housing. And that's a new um, use for those resources. Uh, we'll identify uh, additional and more effective ways to link housing and services for seniors and others. And finally, we'll continue financing housing for large families. The last uh, uh, core activity I want to talk about is more internal, but it's really strengthen our financial and organizational capacity. Um, at Minnesota Housing, in the last couple of years, we've had two major, um, I'd say, process improvements. On the multifamily side, we've had what we refer to as the remodel project. This is a, a process improvement. And we started out with our application process through selections of our RFP, and then also the, um, the awarding of funds. An example of this is we created a portal to submit online applications. So the developers who submit applications can now, uh, can now do their submission totally online, which has made the process more efficient for us and for them. On the single family side or home ownership, we're creating a new, or the contracted to create a new loan origination system that will allow uh, us and our lending partners to commit and purchase um, home mortgages more efficiently. Um, lastly, um, we've made some strategic investments in loans with our strong balance sheet. Um, in the last couple of years, we've um, uh, been able to uh, make a $5, uh, $5 million investment um, in a fund run by the Greater Minnesota Housing Fund to preserve naturally occurring affordable housing. And we've also um, given Habitat for Humanity Twin Cities a $25 million line of credit to expand their business model. Our commitment for 2019 will be to continue implementing the multifamily uh, remodel project. Um, we'll go live with a new single family loan origination system early in calendar year 2019. And uh, finally, we'll find, we'll look for new opportunities to make strategic investments in loans um, that provide a strong risk rate of return for the agency, but also align with our mission. That's a sort of overview of the activities we're going to do for the following year. I just want to briefly talk about the um, amount of resources we're making available and the number of households we're assisting. This graph shows the, or this table shows the number of 
uh, resources we're making available. It's broken out by home buyer and owner financing and refinancing, home buyer education, home improvement, rental production, rental assistance, contract administration. Those are those Section 8 contracts I talked about. Um, um, housing stability for vulnerable pop populations, primarily the homeless population we talked about earlier, and then finally some multiple use resources. As you can see in the middle column under the 2019 proposed AHP, this investment plan is really $1.3 billion. It's our largest effort. It's actually um, uh, almost over $200 million higher than last year. If you look at the, the, the rows, you can actually see you know, a large amount of money goes to the home buyer uh, financing and refinancing. That's just the mortgage that we do for um, home buyers. In the middle, we send a lot of resources both on rental production and rental contract administration. And for the coming year, uh, the two areas that probably had the biggest increases were the home buyer um, financing increasing by 177 million, and then also the rental production of 38 million dollars. So that's sort of a very, very high level overview of how we're allocating our resources. If you go to the plan, you'll be able to see it in more detail. In conclusion, I sort of want to talk about the households we're assisting. You know, we do all this activity um, just to make sure we're benefiting households and um, creating house stability for a more prosperous Minnesota. As the table shows, we're going to be reaching nearly 70,000 households next year um, across those same program areas I talked about earlier. And as you can see, the two biggest areas are the rental assistance contract administration in the middle. Uh, 28,000 households will receive assistance through the um, Section 8 program and the contracts administered by Minnesota Housing. And also home buyer education and counseling is going to be up around 20,000. That area has increased a lot recently. Um, the Home Ownership Center has opened up or added a online um, uh, counseling uh, or education program um, called Framework, and that has expanded the activity a lot. So you can see uh, across the activities where we've spent our, the number of households that we have assisted. Um, so finally, as I want to talk about what's next. Um, in 2019, we'll obviously have a new governor. As Mary mentioned, we'll be developing our 2020-23 strategic plan. And finally, as Mary mentioned, we'll re, uh, review and assess the recommendations for the Governor's Housing Task Force and identify those um, that we can incorporate into our work. I'll uh, briefly leave this slide up here. This will be also on the recorded version of it. Um, and the, um, if you have questions, you can e email me directly or call me. And uh, feel free to do that. Um, I know these plans ask, raise a lot of questions and we're, we'll be free to, happy to answer them. Um, we're gonna now move to the um, comments and Q&A. Um, and before we really get to the q and I want to talk about um, submitting public comments. Um, we will take public comments um, through Friday, September 7th at 2.30 p.m. You can email your comments to mn.housing at statemn.us. Um, you can access the plan if you haven't already at www.mnhousing.gov. That first home page, the lower left is in the box, that says special announcements. Um, and this is a draft plan will be there, and there'll be a link to where it's actually the webinar and um, uh, and the PowerPoint slides will be after this presentation. Um, we are now at uh, noon, uh, so thank you. This is definitely the um, most questions that we've had uh, in uh, my eight years of doing affordable housing plan webinars. So thank you so much for all of your interest. And as John mentioned, uh, since we do have uh, hot off the presses, the uh, report of the Governor's Housing Task Force, we will post a link to that along with uh, the materials from the Affordable Housing Plan. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. Bye-bye now.